Hi, everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am Rosie Stevenson Goodnight, and I have edited as Rosie Step since 2007. I've been a member of the Board of Trustees uh, since uh, 2021. Uh, hi, my name is Victoria Dorodina, and my nick in Wikipedia is Victoria. I am from Eastern Europe. I live in the UK. And I've been editing since 2006 and uh, on the board of trustees uh, since 2021. Uh, also, as some of you know, I have the best music here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think I, I may say something about my Go for role. It. So you all know me uh, from yesterday, I hope. Um, so hi again. And thanks, Liana, for, for hosting us uh, in this session. I am, um, in terms of my trusteeship, maybe it's worth mentioning that I've been a trustee since 2019, so this is my second term now, and I am the vice chair of the board and the chair of the community affairs committee, um, and really happy to be here with all of you. So this is basically a session for you, also with us, maybe Yael. Yael, can you say hi to everyone? Thanks, Liana. Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Yael Weisberg, the Vice President of Community Growth at the Foundation. So I lead the Community Resources Teams, which is the grant making team, um, the Community Development Team, Community Programs, which you all know because of the, edu the amazing education work that they help support, and uh, the Partnerships Team. So I'm happy to be here. Yes. And the reason why I asked uh, Yael to introduce herself, although she's not a trustee, she is one of our, tra uh, our staff members is that uh, we may defer some of your questions to her if it's too operational. The board, this is maybe a good reminder that the board is um, a body that does more strategic work. And if your questions are going to be too operational or too, too much connected, we'll just defer you to Yael. So that's why maybe you can come closer to us. Yes, so Liana? Yeah? Okay, who has a question? Not everyone at once. Musab. Hi everyone, my name is Musab. Uh, I had a question to the board about uh, you know education program because it's a, a, an educational uh, you know conference. Uh, we used to to work with education department and the foundation. There was uh, uh, our one of our friends called Ty Flanagan. Uh, you might know him. Before, the, like in my experience, as I am running the education program since 2015, it was more smoother in my like to apply. For example, we do like courses and we want to uh, give some certificates to the students. Give some like simple prizes like going through grant when there is like a, a responsible you know stakeholder at the foundation what very easy now uh, you will apply for rapid grant and then like you have no specificity for your application nobody like to to contact to fast in the process or like to to telling him about your special need or such so i i, I hope that the group and the program of the you know you know wikipedia education program like still have like some you know stakeholder like department, let's say, at the foundation, so that it's like responsible of increasing the, the scope because we still have countries that have no education programs. Um, so like by having uh, somebody like with direct, with direct direction in the, in the foundation, I found this will be like making our program uh, much expanding and uh, much easier. That's my point of view. So what is your question? <laughs> the question is that why this like this this thing like this department is no longer in the foundation uh, they, we used to to work with them so easy and then the, this like um, um, the responsible guy like went away and we don't know why this program was cancelled yeah thank you Mossab. that's can you just give the mic to Yael? Because that's a, a great example of an thanks. operational question. Yeah, thanks, Wasab. Uh, so we do still have the education team at the foundation. Um, the person responsible is actually in a different session right now, Ben. And you know Selesh and Melissa, who are both here. So it sounds like you've had some problems getting um, knowing who to connect with, and that we can help solve, and I'm sorry it's been difficult. But I just want to name two things. So one, the, the team is very much still here. 
Um, the second point is that this is the first time, I think, at least I've been at the foundation for about four and a half years now, and at least in my tenure, this is the first time that we've actually named education as a core priority in our annual plan this year. And so you'll see that that's something that we um, really believe, oh, the mic just got louder, <laughs> um, something we really believe is important for the foundation to support, but in a potentially new and different way. So I think the foundation is looking at ways that we can better support you in the movement doing an ed education work and maybe investing ourselves in education programs a little bit less. The theme, uh, yeah, the way we're supporting. So really looking to, to better support the education work that's happening in the movement, but carrying out less programmatic work ourselves as a foundation. Uh, why I'm asking this because before we were approached by the by the foundation like when I was like um, I was just a student at Hashimoto University and had been approached by uh, by like the foundation so they were like searching for us to uh, support us now like it's like like um, we need to know who's the, st the responsible guys so I'm thinking like we should in be in bigger collaboration so both search for, the, for each other because like I know there is education team and though I know there is education foundation but like um, um, we we don't have like uh, let's say regular contacts or you know um, like scheduled meetings so that we can like know where you reach in your program do you have any difficulties uh, you, we can support them I'm just saying about this actually my comment actually um, the user group does have monthly meetings but or y yeah I mean, yes yeah, I mean, I think I can take this from the user group perspective, which is, I think, you know, we in the Wikipedia and Education user group are interested in better collaborating with the foundation's education staff and making sure um, we're sort of looking to a future where we're supporting all of the educational efforts across uh, across the globe. And I think Shani mentioned this in her keynote yesterday around their sort of disparate groups in the movement that are providing support, but it hasn't been coordinated very well. And I think one of the things we are particularly interested in, and I mean we here as the user group, the foundation's education staff, um, you know, everyone who's putting together this conference, who's been collaborating together to make this event happen, we want to make sure that we are bringing that spirit of collaboration and coordination to the movement in the future. Um, I will also plug, Cornelius is currently running a needs finding session in the Belgrade room, um, and there will be a repeat of it right after lunch, and I would strongly encourage you to participate in that because the specific needs of kind of what support is your program not getting that it should be getting in the future is exactly what we're trying to determine through that session. And so Yael mentioned Ben, who's leading the education efforts at the foundation right now. He is currently in that other room facilitating that needs finding uh, work with Cornelia. So I would strongly encourage you, if you have specific needs for your program, to participate in the afternoon session of that. I, I also want to comment specifically more strategically around education, and then Rosie has some, some more insights to share. So I can say that from the board's perspective, thematic work in general that is happening across different countries is important. I think we're at a very unique moment in the history of the foundation and our movement where we're trying to reassess and reimagine how we're doing things because um, some of the previous models are not working well for us, Sim as simple as that. And as we grow and as we have more reach and as we mature, we need to find new ways to do things. And I think um, we are very thankful as the board to Yael and to the various user groups and entities in the movement um, for being so open and so flexible in their thinking because it's not easy to make changes, right? People are used to certain things and suddenly we're saying, hey, this is not working anymore. Well, at least not as well as it could, or it's not serving our mission and vision, the joint one together. So, hey, we need to reimagine it. And really, part of why all of us are here at this conference is to do this new thinking together and try to reimagine how it may look like. And it is a priority a strategic one for the foundation. Yeah, El mentioned this is part of our now annual plan. And there has been another effort done by our CEO, Mariana Iskander, to actually tie 
the whole annual planning of the Wikimedia Foundation much closer to our strategic movement vision, right? So this is a new thing. We've been doing it not so long. Um, previous leadership did not really do it in this way, and it takes time. So be patient with us, communicate with us. We are looking exactly to do what you wanted, to be more coordinated globally and to have a shared vision and a shared understanding of where it is that we want to go. And I think all of us recognize the power and the maturity, specifically from all the, the entities in the movement of the education group um, or the education community in helping us re-examine how it might look like. So this is for us sort of a case study. We don't have the answers. We are here to find the answers together and to find whether or not it works. And we might, by the way, we might try things and fail. And that's absolutely fine. We some, some of us call it failing forward. So we try, we, or like our strategic direction, right? We try something, we evaluate it, and we iterate. I guess we're going to have a lot of that in the coming year, few years. Um, but I'm excited, and we're all excited about the opportunity to actually reimagine it and, and have the partners to do it. This has not been the case in the... It's a, it's, I did really mean it. This is a unique moment in time that hasn't, like the star have aligned for this to happen now, and all the different entities are ready to do this work, and it wasn't the case previously. Rosie? Well, you covered a lot of what I was going to say, but let me add to that, that this is a unique moment, and that the annual plan for this year, um, if you've had a chance to review it, tells that we're going to focus on um, three particular areas um, to give it more of a focus than we ever had before. And education is number one on that list. Culture is on there too, and as is gender. Along with those three, there's also a um, much larger focus on product and technology, which is going to be very helpful in the work that we do, particularly for education, but also for culture and also for gender. So exciting times. We're doing this together. We're looking outward as much as we're looking at inward, which is a new approach. And everything we do is tied to the strategic work that we started back in 2016. We got its strategic direction in 2017. We came up with 10 recommendations in 2020. We have 45 um, initiatives that we're working on, all of it to bring us towards 2030. And this year, it's education, culture, and gender. So again, exciting times that we're doing together, which is why we're all not just in this room, but in three rooms having these kinds of conversations. Vicky, do you have anything to add? Uh, I wanted to say is that uh, to clarify the role of the board in all of this, uh, when we met in New York, uh, board has uh, two annual meetings, and there was also MCDC is there uh, that works on the movement charter, and endowment board, which is a separate organization, and we had a joint session which considered education and possible ways to uh, promote education and to join together all these dots that Shani was talking about. Because we are on the stage where there is a lot of information, but it's all uh, separated and people don't know what other people are doing, right? So the foundation's uh, role probably will be in connecting all these dots and providing framework for the education. And in the annual planning, the money, everybody I think is interested in money, for the grants was increased uh, by one third, so it's not 15 million. And because education provides significant part of the outreach, uh, I would say that it means uh, that there will be more resources. Mehman. Thank you. 
speaker who is not no uh, me i'm mehman from georgia uh, and from afcom and yeah from and from afcom and from uh, different uh, okay uh, just about coordination the coordination within the foundation like affiliates and community to uh, to the foundation it's so difficult for some years and uh, this is one of the main issue uh, for example C region we are used as of as a contact point to the foundation for the years uh, now there is language facilitators and we can uh, use them uh, who read the foundation APP like annual plan uh, there is clearly a road that uh, there will be uh, a good front door uh, for the, in the foundation. So I'm hoping that in the coming years we, we will have a good front door in the foundation to reach out to different departments and different people uh, who will know what we are doing and what we want from the foundation. So maybe in coming years it will be fixed that issue with the coordination. What is your question? No, it just comment. Oh, a comment. Okay. Florence. Okay, maybe I'm going to ask a weird question and maybe going a little bit backward. Um, for me in education, I'm mostly interested in the offline education. So all the people not connected and it's just not a detail. The question I wanted to ask is, you keep repeating that you are going, uh, we are in a new era where things are going into the new direction, new thinking, blah, blah, blah. So. I absolutely uh, think that all of us agree that the tech was a problem, lots of problems, lots of things delayed and so on. But I, I, I cannot really uh, see what was a problem in the, edu in the way the education was working. So what, so yeah, I'm interested that I can, as you, I can a, talk as a board member. So much about that. Yeah, but, but it, give us I, a couple I of examples. I honestly example. think it yeah. doesn't really relate to the board. So can we, oh. um, can we maybe see if there are other questions to the board? And if uh, not, I can comment on that and I can share okay. some of the issues, okay? okay. okay because yeah. it's completely non-related to the board. Well, except, except the board still gives the general direction and typically changing from a situation where the, the foundation the history. is... Sorry? You're, you're talking about the history of what, what, what were the issues, oh, right? What are the issues the last few years that emerged in education that made you decide that there wouldn't be so much directly being done by the Wikimedia Foundation, but more uh, the foundation giving support to the FEA to do things about education, which seems to be the new, new direction for okay, education so strictly. So you, the board made a decision about this. It's not only an operational issue. So I was just wondering if you had some feedback on this. Yes, so that's indeed not, not really connected actually to education, but I would say rather to the scope of everything that we do. So where to even begin answer that? Well, when Mariana joined as CEO, some of you may remember that she did a mapping exercise. I keep reminding this mapping exercise because I think that was a brilliant move on her behalf because I think many of the issues that we've that have come up in our movement in the last few years stem from the fact that there is a lot happening but historically we didn't have necessarily owners to who's doing exactly what and I really appreciated Mariana taking the time to map the different things and check hey, who's responsible for that and who's responsible for that? Because that informed a deeper discussion on everything that the foundation does. And the reality honestly is the foundation cannot do everything. It just can't, not well. So it's about understanding exactly what it is that we want to do and can do and need to be the, the owners of and drive properly and then what we can't. And then not only just say we can't touch that, but actually find new owners to these gaps of, of ownerships in the movement. And I think historically what happened is that everyone just assumed the foundation can do everything. And I mean, you're a previous board member, you know how this works, but people just expect the foundation to cover everything and to be responsible for every, everything. And that's just not the reality that we all have. Um, 
And I think education was just one of many, many um, things that weren't really covered properly for years. Not because people didn't want to, just because we have limited resources. And again, when I say limited resources, I want to I wanna acknowledge, yes, we have a, a hundred and, and uh, almost $75 million uh, um, uh, budget for yearly. It's, it's becoming smaller now, but roughly, right? At least last year. And it sounds like really a lot of money for some people. But when you consider everything that we need to do and the fact that we actually operate the seventh biggest website in the world, um, and understand that it's not just, it's just one of gazillion other projects and gazillion other initiatives. I think we, we counted and we got to almost 200 different initiatives or they're just astronomical numbers because even Wikipedia, right? It's not one, it's 300 different languages that need to be supported. And it's every version of Wikisource and every, it's a lot. It's just really a lot and there are extensions and there are issues and you know so technologically it's been challenging the budget is not that big considering everything that we do and we just can't be the owners of everything so what mariana is doing for the past few years when since she joined us is really be much more focused in the annual planning first of all anchoring it to movement strategy but also then finding these key areas where we are focused on and trying to, to experiment and engage in new ways to, to do things. And I think education and I would say thematic work in general has been a, one of these places where we're trying to see if we can shift the own, most of the ownership besides you know, giving the infrastructure that Yael can talk more about probably. Um, but keeping the infrastructure, the tech support, the tools, right, the things that we do best, the fundraising, things that we excel at, at the foundation, but see how, how it means to co-own with other entities in the movement, right? And see if we can have the community lead some of these things, which is why part of our discussion this weekend is, do we need an educational hub? Is this the right structure for us to liaise with the foundation to actually run education more efficiently. So it comes to that. It comes to roles and responsibilities and finding good owners to the missing bits that haven't been properly owned. And it's not happening only in education. Mariana took uh, last year two specific areas that she's looking into more specifically as case studies. One was Wikicommons and the other was Wikidata as Examine, as examples that we can explore together as a, as, as a foundation to see what our impact can be to, to help um, figure some of the issues. Um, and in parallel, um, as was mentioned, much of it is related to tech and tech development. And so we just recently, pre, like consideringly recently, um, finally have a new CTPO, right? A, um, uh, Selena Deckelman, who joined us in August. It's not a long time. She's still entering the role and um, doing a lot, obviously, to change the structures to make it more efficient. So we can then further explore um, how we can best support the movement and how we can work with the different requests coming from the ground. And it's very difficult. It's very challenging. It's not easy. And again, we're here to try to improve the way that we've been doing things. Well, if I, if I hear you well, that means that it would move in the direction where some of the affiliates would actually specialize themselves in certain areas way more than they have been doing so far, right? If, if they can. So we if are they can, and if they want to. If, yes, if we are exploring exactly these options, we don't have the answers, we don't have the, it's a joint process of exploring who can take on specific responsibilities. Obviously, this is also connected to other efforts that are happening, including the MCDCs, um, 
movement charter, the, the global council, it's all kind of connected. It's an ecosystem of changes that we've been going through and it's all tying together. So uh, this is just to maybe stress that yes, the board is with leadership directing to a, a direction where we're having much more clarity about roles and responsibilities in the movement, which is critical, I think, and has been part of the reasons where we had issues and conflicts stemming from exactly that. And also jointly working on finding these solutions because it can't be the foundation telling the movement this is how it's going to work. This is not where we are at. We're really looking at working collaboratively to, to figure this out. In the spirit of working collaboratively, I'm going to stop us here because we are over time. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you so much to uh, our board members for their generosity in coming in at the last minute and, um, and taking these questions. And I will plug again the track in the Belgrade room. Please attend that. Please attend Manav's session later on the Movement Charter Drafting Committee and Movement Strategy and Education. These are spaces where we're trying to co-create um, this new reality, the new future that Shani was talking about. And we want your opinion and we want your perspective. This should not just be led by the people who have been talking about it for the last year. This should be led by all of us as a community. And this is the open invitation for you to participate. So please join us. Thank you. And if you have additional questions, Rosie and Vicky and myself are here. Just catch us and talk to us. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.